It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's County Public Schools. We have two outstanding elementary schools here to play our game today. They've each won their initial games, and today they are vying for the chance to move on to the semifinals in this, our 36th year of competition. Nice to have you with us today. Play along, see how many of these questions you can get right yourself. Today's two teams, Hyattsville and Yorktown. So let's meet the Hyattsville team. They're up first, and would you please say hello to Grayson, their captain. Hey, Grayson, wave hello. to everybody at home. He is joined by Lewis, another fifth grader. Hey, Lewis, good to have you back on the show. Hi. And rounding out our threesome is Maxwell. Hey, Maxwell. Hey. All right, let's get to it. We have six categories of questions. In each category, we have a five, a 15, and a 25-point question based on level of difficulty. And uh, we have your first nine questions coming up. So if you're ready, let's go to the green things category, category of all about plants for five points. At one time, ship's captains kept a record of their journeys in one of these. The same word that describes a piece of wood. Put a B as its first letter, and you get an updated website written in an informal style. It's a log, right, Grayson? I guess yeah. it would be a log. Yeah, because yeah. that's the wood and like reading log. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And blog would be the yeah. website. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. what I'm looking for, yes, because I said put a B in the front of it and you get an informal website. Yes, blog, five points. Good start, guys. Let's go. 15 points. Multiple choice. During the recent strike, the work stoppage at some cereal processing plants, perhaps the brand most affected, since it's made from the most planted crop in America, could have been cornflakes, Wheaties, or Rice Krispies. Rice that, Krispies? Yeah, Isn't Rice that, Krispies. Rice Krispies? Yes. Because rice is like super planted. Yeah. But the most planted crop in America is corn. So cornflakes was the right answer there. Sorry about that. Uh, certainly rice, when you look at the entire world, feeds most of the world. But here in America, corn dominates. 25 points in green things. Venus flytraps, those famous meat-eating plants, produce something called phosphatase, a kind of this chemical that helps break down the proteins in the flies that the trap catches. Phosphatase is a kind of what chemical? Since uh, it helps like it acidic? Decomposer. Decomposer. Um, yeah, I guess that would. Because or I think acid, acidic. It would have to break it down, and acid does a good job of breaking acidic? stuff down. Yeah. So, yeah. What you say is absolutely correct. However, what we're looking here, phosphatase, it ends in ASE, it is an enzyme. It is an en enzyme that helps to break down protein. All right, let's go to the zoo, guys. You're going to do better here, I know. Five points. These mammals, known as nature's engineers, have orange buck teeth that, like Beavers. other rodents, never stop growing. Beavers. Beavers is right. You got it. For 15 points. If you like cartoons like I do, you'll know this. SpongeBob, he lives in a pineapple. His neighbor, Patrick the starfish, lives under a rock. And his other neighbor, a cephalopod with 10 tentacles, lives inside, inside an Easter Island head. Squid? Who is he? Squid. Squidward. It's a squid, yeah, he's Squidward. He is a squid, a cephalopod, yes. And for 25 points, another multiple choice question for you. Since Venom, a Marvel Comics character, bonds with a host, usually a human, for mutual benefit, is Venom known as an endoparasite, a symbiote, or a saprophyte? Symbiote. Symbiote, symbiote. Yeah. symbiote absolutely, an example of symbiosis. Nice going. Let's go to the body systems. Five points. If you're trying to do something that requires a lot of effort, 
it is often said that you need to add some grease to this body joint Elbow. to Elbow. get it Elbow. done. Elbow. Elbow, Elbow grease. grease, that's it. 15 points. A number of blind people can now see 16 pixel vision after scientists successfully implanted an artificial one of these eye parts at the back of their eyes. Uh, is it like red? The only eye part I know is like retina. Mm, I know like rods. Maybe, maybe the iris? Mm, no, because iris is at the front. Mm. Retinas might be correct. Yeah, let's try Retina it. Retina is yeah. correct. Retina yeah. is Woo! correct. Yes. Thank you, Lewis. Yeah, you led the way. Let's show you a picture for body systems intended for 25 points. All right, since a baseball catcher's job is dangerous, you can see how well protected he is. Since the job is so dangerous, he wears a mask and a shin guard, S-H-I-N, to protect what bone from injury in his lower leg? Is the correct name for the shin bone is this bone. Wait, uh, is it like a calf or a kneecap? Um, no, kneecap is the knee. Uh, it's either calf or ankle, I think. But I think it's calf. Calf mm. bone? I've never yeah, heard of a calf bone. Calf is where shins are, I think. Yeah, but that's like the meaty part around it. I no, think, like, but you put a shin guard on your calf. Yeah, we should try calf. Calf, calf, all right. Well, uh, Grayson, you were right. Uh, a calf is the soft part. It's a muscle. And we're talking about bones here. And the two bones in your lower leg beneath your kneecap and above your ankle are the tibia and the fibula. And the tibia yeah. bone is the correct name for the shin bone. All right. Mm -hmm. One, two, zero. All right. Not a bad start. I know you're going to get some more points in the second half. We'll see you guys in just a few moments. You're doing well. All right, it is now time to meet that team from Yorktown Elementary School. They did so well in their first game, just as Hyattsville did. Let's meet the team. First, the captain is Julius. Julius, wave to everybody at home, please. Nice to have you back, Julius. Great player. Joined by Lana. Hey, Lana. She's there. Looks like she's praying a little bit. She doesn't have to pray. She knows her stuff. And our fourth grader, those two are fifth graders, our fourth grader is Nate. Hey, Nate. Welcome back. He's there, too. He's always got a smile on his face. All right. Good luck to you. Let's get to our first nine questions. We'll go to our first category, the green things category, all about plants. And here is your five-point question. The sticky substance on the stem of a newly discovered carnivorous plant is just sticky enough to trap small insects that it can eat, but not so sticky as to trap insects that provide what service to that flower? Um, I would think bees, maybe. You guys. Um, We're talking uh -oh. about the service, what service is I provided think, to the flower. I think it's pollination. Yeah, that is correct. Pollination. That is correct, indeed. Thank you, Julius. Yes, you don't want to bite the hand that feeds you. So if the, they come to pollinate, you don't want to eat them because you require they uh, are necessary. Good thinking there. Let's go to the 15-point question in green things. When a leaf's chlorophyll dies out in the fall, chlorophyll is green. Two other colored pigments that have been hiding all summer underneath the chlorophyll appear. They're yellow and they're orange. But another pigment called anthocyanin that is this color is only made after the chlorophyll disappears. It was not hiding all along. What color is that? Think about fall leaves and that'll help you. You guys think it's orange? So that's like orange, yellow. And I've green. already told you that two pigments show themselves, yellow and orange. I've already told you that. It's either brown or red. Brown or red. I think it's, I don't know, I, don't think I, think, I think it's red. I'm going to go with Julius. Yeah. Julius, what are you going to say? Red. Red is correct, yes. Anthocyanin is a red color. All right. You always seem to pull that rabbit out of the hat. I like how you play. Let's go to the 25-point question and show you a picture in green things. 
you'll recognize the corn plant here. Just before the ear forms, you can see the ear there on a corn plant, the plant produces male flowers in the form of one of these, which also names the strings that hang down from a mortar board atop your head when you graduate high school. Um, I would think maybe. Those maybe. strings have what same name as the string that hangs from the mortar board when you graduate? Um, yarn? They're called, they're called tassels, tassels. Mm -hmm. You have a mortar board and a tassel. That's, the, that's that stringy part that you have to pull when you shuck an ear of corn. All right, let's go to the zoo. Let's go to the zoo for five points. If you know what the constellations up in the sky, Ursa Major and Ursa Minor resemble, if you connect the stars, then you'll know that Ursine is an adjective that describes what kind of mammal? Bear. Is you got amazing? it. The big bear and the little bear. Perfect. 15 points, multiple choice. Based on an analysis of its fur, the extinct giant ground sloth. Sloths used to be so big they were as tall as trees. Their diet was mostly plants, but if there was some meat available, if there was a carcass, the sloth would eat that too. That omnivorous behavior, eating plants but some meat, if meat's available, is known as opportunistic feeding, observational feeding, or impactful feeding. You see it and you decide, hey, there's meat, I can eat it. Uh, what did you say, Lana? I think it's the first one. Um, Me too, that's... Opportunistic, absolutely correct, indeed. You seize the opportunity. Why let that food go to waste? Excellent, 25 points. Insurance companies seem to like animals has their logos. Geico has its gecko. Liberty Mutual has its emu. And Pacific Life has one of these leviathans, the biggest it's mammals on whale. earth. The blue whale. It is the whale, absolutely right. You see it breaching the water. Nicely done. You ran the zoo category. You got yourselves 25 points with that last one. Excellent. Three more questions before we take a break. Body assistance for five points. One of the stranger side effects of getting COVID-19 is that these body parts, sometimes called piggies, turn the color of Barney the dinosaur. Um, fingers? I'm pretty sure. What do you guys think? Uh, wait, no, it's mm. not fingers. Wait, I think. Wait. No, I would think it's fingers. No, I think it's toes. I think it's toes. Toes? Are, oh, yeah, because, like, because the... It is toes. Mostly. Absolutely. Julia, she came through. And what color is Barney the dinosaur? Purple. Yeah, purple, purple toes. Imagine that as a side effect to COVID-19. You got yourself five points. Excellent. Five points, 15 points in body systems. Your body's axilla. A-X-I-L-L-A. -L -L -A. You probably don't know that. Very few people have ever heard of that. It is better known as this area under your shoulder that gets pretty stinky because of so many sweat glands there. Armpits. Is it your armpit? It is, that's armpit. right. Armpit. Yep, you got your armpit there. You know, sometimes you gotta sniff a little bit to see if you need some deodorant. <laughs> All right, one more question for you before the break. 25 points, the COVID-19 tests becoming widely available in drugstores, if you can find them. Examine your blood for evidence of these a initial bodies that are signs you have the virus. Mm. You yeah. heard this word so many times over the past year. Sometimes they get so confusing to figure out what's what. These A initial bodies, if they find them in your blood, it's a sign that you do have the virus. 
They're called antigens, the opposite of antibodies, mm -hmm. antigens. Tough question. 135, great round, great round. You're always off to a, a good start. Keep it going there. Our wonderful team here from Yorktown. All right, it's time to welcome back that team from Hyattsville Elementary School. Great team, wonderful captain, great players. Let's find out a little bit about each one of them. Let's go to the captain, Grayson. And Grayson, you look like you mean business there. You look like you're sitting in a captain's chair. You know, you've got the, the headphones and the mic, and uh, you look like you mean business. You told me once before you were thinking about electrical engineering as a career. So obviously you're a good math student as well. Uh, are science and math your favorite subjects, or, and I'm um, putting words in your mouth, tell me what, what you look forward to most when you go to school. I, I very much enjoy math. I mean, partially, we have a really good teacher this year, Mr. Danga, mm -hmm. and a pretty good science bowl coach, too. But um, I've always kind of really liked math and uh, science, too. Wonderful, wonderful. And thank you very much for the, the, the nice accolades there for Mr. Danga. He is indeed a wonderful science ball coach, and thank you for confirming that he's also a great math teacher. I didn't doubt that in the least. Good luck in the second half here, Grayson. Let's talk to Lewis. Hey, Lewis. Lewis, you are so impressive. Hi. You impress me so much because, you know, almost as soon as I finish a question, you pop out with an answer. Oftentimes, it's the correct answer. You seem to be... Uh, really attuned to what's going on in the world. You seem to have a great curiosity. And you hope to do what someday? Uh, well, earlier I said software engineer, but I don't really know yet. Yeah, you have plenty of time to figure that out, but uh, you're a good student of life, and I like how that you connect the dots and you have a good sense of logic and um, something that is, is reasonable when you, when you say something. So good luck to you. You're going to be successful whatever you choose. Let's go to Maxwell. Maxwell, nice to have you on the program. Tell me the Maxwell story. Why did you want to do this? Well, mostly because, well, I love doing stuff that my school starts with, like Science Bowl, and then I'm, uh, later I'll do Drama Club and all that stuff. But I just figured that since I'm old enough and I've ever since I've seen the Science Bowl, I wanted to try it, so pretty happy to be here right now. And we're very happy to have you, and we're happy that you wanted to try it, because that's what we hope, that people watch the show and say, like watching Jeopardy, you sit at home, you think, I could do that. I know those answers. What do you want to do someday, Maxwell? Have you thought about that yet? Oh, uh, I'm so far my mind has been set on computer programming, like JavaScript. Wonderful. Uh, it is the, one of the careers of the moment, and it's not going to go out of style. Computers certainly are here to stay. Uh, they run our lives. All right, Hyattsville, let's have your last nine questions. If you're ready, let's get started with the Let's Get Physical category with five points. Here we go. NASA's new mission called DART, D-A-R-T. It is well chosen, that name. It's going to involve firing a high-speed spaceship right at an asteroid hoping to change its path, keeping it maybe from colliding with Earth someday. It involves an impactor technique known by this K-initialed word that is used for the energy of motion. Kinetic. Kinetic, Kinetic. Kinetic. Kinetic is Kinetic. right. Good start. Good start. Kinetic energy. 15 points. Car battery power, like that of dry cell batteries that you use in your flashlight, is measured in these units. Uh, uh, electrons? No. Electrons. Lewis, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. You look on the side of the battery and it tells you. Uh, is it like gigabytes or something? No, gigabytes is some big. gigawatts, maybe? Thinking too big. Volts. 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 Ah. Volts is what it's measured in. All right. Sometimes the simpler answer is the correct one. For 25 points. Football players and others with suspected head injuries are often given PET, PET scans. Stands for positron emission tomography. Didn't expect you to know that. They also get MRIs. We hear that a lot. MRIs are these M-initialed resonance images. What does uh, the M stand memory, for? Memory. 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 Oh, magnetic. 
Magnetic is what it stands for. Magnetic resonance images. Let's go to Pope Bree. You're going to get these. For five points, I have a picture for you. Love these birds. You see them flying all over Maryland now. At one time, they were threatened with extinction because of a pesticide called DDT. When ospreys, that's what the birds are called, capture fish, which they do, and they do it all over Maryland, they always make sure the fish's head is pointing forward as they fly back to their nests because it reduces what? De-initialed force. Drag? Yeah. You got it. It does reduce the drag. They are smart, those birds. For 15 points, let's see how well you know your nursery rhymes. I hope little Miss Muffet wasn't lactose intolerant because she dined on these two milk-laden foods while sitting on her tuffet. Uh, I, one of them is cheese. And was it Before like Little Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet eating her cheese. curds Orange. and whey. <laughs> curds and whey. Curds is a form of cottage cheese. We would have accepted that, mm -hmm. but we needed both of them. Curds and whey, which is a milk product as well. 25 points, potpourri. The United States Department of Energy helped the Human Genome Project sequence three of the total number of human chromosomes. How many human chromosomes are there? There is a company that will tell you your roots, and it is known by this number and me. How many human chromosomes are there? Um, three, no, 23, 23. You got it, it is 23, 46, because they pair up. Excellent. You pulled that one out. You got yourself 25 points. You needed those points. Nice work. Dateline. Here we go. Last three questions, guys. Five points. A microbe called Conan the bacterium is nearly indestructible, being able to withstand high levels of this given off by nuclear waste. Radiation? Yeah. You got it. Five points. Radiation. 15 points. The Department of Energy scientists have invented a rat cap. A, pot, a portable brain scan that they put on rats that doesn't require the rats to undergo this A initial procedure to put them to sleep. Anesthesia. A yeah, yeah. Anesthesia is right. You got it. Let's get this last one. 25 pointer. There is a new malaria vaccine. Huge, huge. It is a huge development for the young people in Africa. The problem is it is only about 30% effective, unlike the COVID-19 vaccines, which are almost 100% effective. The COVID vaccine treats a virus. COVID is caused by a virus. Malaria is tougher to beat because it is caused by one of these P-initialed organisms. Uh, well... Like plankton, maybe? No, that's underwater. It's, wait, what do mosquitoes do? Uh, they Mosquito, drink blood. Mosquitoes are involved is, in malaria. Certainly they are. Yeah. So the actual causative agent, Pesticide? what actually causes Pes causes the mm -hmm. malaria? I, it is P initial. I hear pesticide. Do I hear anything else? Uh, I would think plankton, maybe. We'll try yeah, that's, that's an, yeah. This is right. Those are, those are good guesses, guys. But when the mosquito bites, it injects a parasite. Hair. A parasite into the bloodstream. And that's what causes it. Tough question. You still had a decent round. One, seven, five. One, seven. We'll see if that does it. This is a tough round. It may get you into the semifinals. Guys, congratulations. I'm impressed with your playing. I like how you work. We'll see you again in a couple minutes. All right, it's now time to bring back that team from Yorktown and find out a little bit about our players here. And Julius, you're such a great captain. Tell us a little bit about how you know so much about science. You really do. Um, well, my mom's a science teacher and she teaches me a lot of stuff. So that's how I know a lot. And I've been studying science well and practicing with Ms. Deffenball and Ms. Kemp to get better at it.
Well, uh, you've got some great teachers, and mom is always, moms are always first and foremost our favorite teachers, so hats off to mom, and uh, it's great to have a science teacher in the house, and boy, that really shows, and you've been taking your lessons well. Uh, tell us what you do in your spare time. What do you do to kind of prepare yourself to do things like this? Um, I um, study for science and Social studies. I bet you're a good, are you a reader? I bet you're a reader. Yes. Yeah, boy, when you read, like you just you, you, you just open up yourself to so many different opportunities and scenarios you didn't imagine, and it's great for your language development. And I like how you listen carefully, Julius, to the questions, and you kind of take it apart. You're not rushed, but oftentimes you pull that right answer out. Good luck to you in this second half here. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go down to Lana. Hey, Lana. I know the last time we were talking to you, and there was we had a sort of a bad connection. But you told me you wanted to be a scientist at that time. Uh, any particular kind of scientist? Because I know you're a people person. Mm, well, I mean, I kind of want to learn like about sea animals and stuff. So technically, like I don't know, like a marine biologist, but that does like scientific. Things, you know. I can see so you as a like marine biologist. Read. Yeah. Yeah, zoology. Zoology would up be up there as well. Biology. You know, there's so much to explore. The ocean is still vastly unknown to us. You know, there's so much. They always seem to be finding new fish and new things down there that we've never even known existed. Good luck to you in the second half here. And your teammate, Nate. Nate is our fourth grader among the fifth grade group here today. And Nate, uh, I know your mom is one of the coaches here, and you told me that she told you to listen carefully to those questions for the clues. And you've been doing that faithfully here. Uh, what do you like to do in your spare time, Nate? So I like to build Legos and play video games That's and wonderful. read books. I love What books. kind of books do you like, Nate? All types, mangas. Kind of, I really like the adult books and stuff. I'd like well, to read was, those. Yeah, as I was saying I uh, to Julius, reading is reading is everything, you know. And the more different kinds of books you read, you know, the 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 more your horizons are expanded. You're playing such a nice game, and I hope you're with us for many years on Science Ball, Nate. All right, it is now time for your last nine questions, Yorktown. Can you do it? Can you do it? Yes, you can. All right. That's what President Obama used to say. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. All right, here we go. Let's get physical for five points. Competitive swimmers have been known to shave their entire bodies, including under their arms, to reduce this force and thus make them more hydrodynamic. Um... I would think maybe like weight because you don't need all the extra weight because that'll slow you down. The friction, maybe? Friction, that's exactly right. And Nate set you up nicely for that because, yeah, you want to reduce anything that's going to slow you down so it reduces friction. Absolutely right. Good answer. For 15 points, when water freezes, it becomes less what? Which is why ice cubes float at the top of your glass of water. When water freezes, it Dense. becomes less what? Say Dense. it again, Nate. Dense is correct. Dense. Yes, sir. Dense is right. For 25 points. All right, we're in the laboratory. If you add some acetic acid bacteria to wine, put in a little oxygen, the alcohol in the wine will turn into this common household liquid that, depending on how strong it is, can be used to clean your kitchen floor, or it can kill weeds, or you can mix it with olive oil to put on your salad. What did you just make? Vinaigrette. Vinaigrette, yes, you have made vinegar, absolutely right. Vinegar can do all those things. It's, it is a multi-purpose liquid. Yeah, you can clean with it, you can kill weeds, and you can put it on your salad. Quit playing. Potpourri for five points. Here we go. 
Charles Darwin, that famous scientist who studied evolution, said, and I quote, laughter from being tickled is this kind of action. Much like when the doctor taps your kneecap with a small hammer and your leg goes out and you have no control over it. That kind of action is known as a what? A reflex. A reflex. Thank you, Lana. Yeah. It is a reflex. Yes, indeed. Laughing when you're tickled. It's a you can't stop yourself. You can't say, don't laugh. All right, Nate's giving me those thumbs up there. All right, for 15 points. While the Gulf Stream, a warm ocean current in the Atlantic Ocean, influences our weather, so too does this other stream, a river of air that can bring down cold air from Canada or push hot air up from the south. What do you guys think? I know this. I know this. Uh, uh, Nate is agonizing over this. Julius is okay. thinking carefully. She said, all right, Mr. Zarin said the Gulf Stream is a warm ocean current, but this other stream is a river of air that influences our weather by bringing down cold air or bringing up warm air. It's called mm -hmm. the jet stream, the jet stream. All right, let's move on to your final three questions. Dateline for five points. Scientists have recently decoded the entire genome of this official Maryland state crustacean whose scientific name may mean beautiful swimmer, but is better known because it's so good to eat. Blue crabs. Blue <laughs> crab is right. Yes, indeed. The blue crab. Perfect. 15 points. This year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry went to two men who came, with a new, came up with a new kind of catalyst to make these kinds of chemical structures, which are collections of atoms joined by bonds. If you put a lot of atoms together, bond them together, they form these. I think it would form DNA, maybe. Or like a double helix. Hmm. DNA is an example of one of these. Molecules. Yes, indeed, it is molecules. Yes. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Good one. Another one you pulled out of the hat. Dateline for 25. Last question of the game. Let's go out here in style. It's getting harder and harder to buy computers and cars because of a worldwide shortage of these S initial chips. They're essential for digital devices. I know this, but I just I can't would, get it on the back of my head. I would think like shipping. No, it might it might be sonar. I don't know. Software chip? Yeah. The correct answer here is semiconductors. Semiconductors. Those are those little chips that they need. They're so tiny to make computers and cars work. Still, you have a wonderful round. All right, so your final score is 205, Yorktown. 205. Let's see if that does it. Second time today. Uh, all of you spent the day here involved with Science Bowl. You have prepared for this, and uh, boy, you acquitted yourselves beautifully all day today. These scores have been high, letting me know how much you've prepared, how much you've studied how great your coaches are, and how great that support from parents and teachers and coaches has been. Our final tally today, Hyattsville 175, Yorktown 205. Yorktown, congratulations, you are move on. You will move on to the semifinals in April, playing the winner of the January 25th game. Congratulations to you, congratulations to Hyattsville. All of you guys played just so well today. Uh, we congratulate Coach Deffenbaugh, her, her first year at Yorktown. We congratulate Mr. Danga, who really came into the game last year and almost won everything, almost won it all. So he was a late entry, and he is, uh, boy, he's disciplined, and he's caring, he's empathetic. And we heard from Grayson what a great math teacher he is. Mr. McKee is here, I believe, the principal at Hyattsville. Ms. Savoy is here, the principal at Yorktown. I know how proud you are of your coaches and your kids 
And uh, we will look forward to seeing everybody, including all of our alternates out there. We've got uh, Auden, Auden and uh, Davis, David rather, and Max. And we have, let's see, some other alternates. We have, I believe, Octavia and Natalia, uh, Edward, Carrington, Gabriel. You're all out there. You're all wonderful players and uh, you're good scientists too. Your science is not in the making, you're already there. Each year you can get better and better and better. Thank you all for starting out your new year with us. Have a great 2022. Let's make sure this pandemic is in the rear view mirror soon so we can get you back here into the schools and into the Science Bowl studio where I hope to see you again. Bye-bye everybody.